Part 1 gave a flyover for establishing the gain structure of a sound system. The quick recap is that mixers are designed to output an average signal voltage of about 1 volt RMS. Post-mixer processors modify the signal without changing the level much. The amplifier is then adjusted for the desired playback level from the loudspeakers. If you do it this way, the meters will move on your mixer, and the residual electronic noise at the system output will be inaudible to the audience. This assumes that the input signal to your system has a high signal-to-noise ratio. This is vital, because if it doesn't, there's no way to restore it later. Garbage in, garbage out. Let's take a closer look. Electronic program sources, such as computer sound cards and media players, produce residual noise that is largely independent of what they are playing back. This means that the higher you set the playback level, the higher the signal-to-noise ratio will be. A recording has residual noise that is dependent on the playback level of the program source. It goes up and down as the volume is changed. A high overall signal-to-noise ratio requires that you start with a low noise recording and set the playback volume to use the full dynamic range of the player. The microphone shown will produce an audio signal that includes a replica of the sound picked up from the environment as well as its own self-noise. This equivalent input noise is unavoidable. It's produced by the electronics within the microphone. Since we usually think about the mic's output signal being based on the acoustic signal that it picks up, this EIN is treated as a minimum SPL that enters an otherwise noiseless mic. Let's say the EIN is 20 dB SPL. If the signal produced by a whisper into the mic is only 30 dB SPL, the signal-to-noise ratio would be 10 dB. Not so great. How do I improve the signal-to-noise ratio? By speaking louder. The louder I speak, the higher the signal-to-noise ratio, until I speak so loud that I overdrive the microphone. Even with good mics, the people that use them need to speak like they want to be heard. Another way to improve the signal-to-noise ratio is to speak closer to the mic. Each time I have the distance to the mic, the SPL that enters it is about 6 dB higher. The EIN is unchanged, so the signal-to-noise ratio improves with decreased mic-to-source distance. In the vast majority of applications, the signal-to-noise ratio of the signal from the microphone has nothing to do with the mic's self-noise. It is determined by the noise picked up from the environment. A demonstration is in order. The meter shows what's being picked up by the microphone in my office. I've got the input gain of the mixer cranked up and I'm well off of the microphone, a couple of feet. And this produces a poor direct to reflected ratio uh, for the signal going into the sound system. Now there's no way to fix this later in the signal chain. So if I don't want the speakerphone effect, I've got to improve the direct reflected ratio of the signal going into the system. Now to make matters worse, I'll increase the noise floor of my office by uh, turning on a noise source. So now I have both poor signal to noise ratio and poor direct to reflected ratio. Now how would I go about fixing this? The first thing I'll do is I'll turn down the input gain of the mixer so that I can work closer to the microphone. So now I'm speaking directly into the mic and the signal to noise ratio is improved as is the direct to reflected ratio. So that's an improvement. But this is still as good as the signal's going to be going into the system unless I do something about the signal to noise ratio. So if I switch off the noise source, I now get down to the actual noise floor of my office, which is much lower uh, than it was. I get a better signal to noise ratio. So this is a pretty optimal signal going into the system. 
Now you can see that my office is not a studio and there's still some residual noise down there at the bottom. Any further improvement would have to come from uh, some room treatment and noise control or I can introduce a gate uh, to set a threshold uh, to mute the microphone if the signal doesn't exceed it. So let me turn a gate up and you can watch the noise floor drop off at the bottom of the display. So with the gate engaged, I've got the nice quiet office that I've always wanted. Testing one, two, three, four. So this demonstrates that garbage in, garbage out. If you want optimal sound from your system, you've got to work on the signal that's being picked up by the microphone. Poor direct reflected ratio and poor signal to noise ratio cannot be corrected later in the signal chain. Setting the input gain is a critical part of the system gain structure process. It should only be done once the microphone is being used properly. Add just enough gain to get to line level. Once it is set, there's no reason to change it unless there's a change in the way that the talker is using the microphone. And most importantly, speak up and speak close. Your overall signal-to-noise ratio will be no better than what you achieve at the source.